Hi, this is John Lawton. Thank you for joining me today. I want to have you turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And while you're doing that, I'll open us up in a word of prayer. Father, I do thank you uh, for another opportunity, uh, Lord, to share some of what you've been putting on my heart of recently and uh, pray that you would uh, just speak through me, uh, Lord, and speak to hearts, Lord, uh, anyone that may be watching or that... Uh, that's dealing with whatever today, Lord. Just do your work in our hearts and minds today, and uh, thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Colossians chapter one, I'm gonna start with verse uh, 23. You know, there, there are many suffering right now uh, in the world. Um, some are sick. Uh, there are real people that are really sick. There are real people that are really dying. So no matter what your perspective is on this, situation that's happening in our country and in our world right now, uh, there really are people that are suffering. Um, maybe you have other sicknesses, maybe you have a chronic illness, maybe you have, um, God forbid, maybe you have cancer, maybe you have um, people in your family that you love or, that are sick. Uh, maybe you're a believer and you're concerned about uh, someone in your family, somebody you love that, uh, that isn't saved. Uh, there's so much going on uh, in this world right now um, that lends itself to this term of suffering. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. The title of my message for this video is The Joy of Suffering. So in Colossians chapter 1, verses 23 and 24, we see it says, uh, and this is Paul talking, he says, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So we see here in this uh, couple of verses that Paul claims to rejoice in his sufferings. What Paul understood that really today's American Christians really don't get is that we are all called to suffer uh, and we should find joy in suffering. Uh, why is that? Well, Jesus suffered. Jesus suffered for your sake and for mine. Uh, therefore, uh, we suffer for his sake and for the gospel. Jesus uh, suffered for our sake. I'll start with that point uh, today. Jesus suffered for our sake. Uh, throughout the gospels, you see, it says uh, many times, these exact words, he must suffer many things. Um, he was preparing to suffer. He knew he was going to suffer. Luke 24, 46 through 47 uh, talks about how it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. 1 Peter 1, 9 through 11. Uh, the prophets of long ago spoke of salvation by grace through faith. In uh, 1 Peter 1, 9, uh, 9 through 11, it talks about this. In verse 11, it says, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Why should we rejoice in suffering? because he suffered for us. He suffered for our sake. And so we should suffer for his sake. We should suffer for Jesus' sake. We're called to suffer. Believe it or not, Christian, you and I are called to suffer because he suffered for us. First Peter 2, 19 through 21 uh, says, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, he should be thankful. In verse 21, uh, it says we are called to suffer because Christ suffered for us as an example. We should follow his steps. We should follow his example. He suffered for us as an example of how we should suffer for his sake and uh, that, we should, that, that we should follow his example. Romans 8, 17 through 18, heirs if we suffer with him is what we are. We are heirs if we suffer with him, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ is what it says there in Romans 8, 17 through 18, that we may be also glorified together with him. Verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be re revealed in us. So why am I called to suffer? Well, Philippians 3, 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. That's why you and I, Christian, are called to suffer. First Peter 4.13, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Hebrews 11, 24 through 26. You see, by faith, Moses, uh, he was come to years, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. 2 Corinthians 1 5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Why shouldn't we suffer? Jesus suffered for us. We are called to suffer for him. We are called to suffer also for the gospel's sake. We're called to suffer for Christ's sake, and we're called to suffer for the gospel's sake. 1 Corinthians 9 12, suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Are you hindering the gospel because you're not willing to suffer? Um, I know it's easy for someone who doesn't have a lot of suffering in his life to say to you, um, but I'm just trying to convey to you what the Bible says about suffering and how, about how you can rejoice no matter what you're dealing with today, no matter what you're suffering through. God has promised to walk through it with you. He's never promised to free you from it. He's never promised to rescue you from it. Although there are times I, God has miraculously uh, healed someone from an affliction or um, rescued them from something that they're dealing with. But more times than not, I think God uh, allows suffering to teach us something. He allows suffering to help us to grow. He allows suffering to help us to be in a pl place where we're better able to help others and uh, to love others. Uh, and so... Um, we, uh, we, we, we were called to suffer. And um, the, one of the reasons, as I've said, we're called to suffer is for the gospel's sake. When um, someone who needs the Lord sees someone who has the Lord suffering and enduring through it and dealing with it in a way um, that, that shows the love of Christ to others in spite of how they feel and in spite of what they're suffering through, uh, that um, helps the gospel to get through to people that need it. How about you? Uh, non-Christian, non-churchgoer. Are you rejecting the gospel? Are you rejecting that gospel that's being shared with you or that's being shown to you? Are you rejecting it in spite of the people that you see that love the Lord, that are suffering and enduring through it and trusting the Lord through it? Uh, are you rejecting the gospel today? That's the most important question that I could ever ask you in this video or in any other video is, are you rejecting the gospel? Because if you're rejecting the gospel, then you're rejecting Christ. You're rejecting God. You're rejecting um, the one who died for you, the one who can save you, the one who can reconcile you to God, the one who can, yeah, also give you a home in heaven when you die, but give you a better life here on earth. Sure. Uh, not, again, not promised that we're not going to have suffering, but we will have a better life if we trust the Lord and if we serve the Lord because we're gonna have joy in our suffering. We're gonna have joy in our hardships. And we're gonna we're going to have joy in knowing God and loving Him and abiding in Him. If you're rejecting the gospel today, today's the day. Today's the day for you to get a, get a hold of that. Get it into the Bible. Take a look at what God has to say about salvation and about uh, the truth of the gospel. If you need help with this, please contact me. You can reach me at john at johnclawton.org. My website is johnclawton.org. Um, you can uh, go there anytime. Uh, again, email me anytime. I'm glad to talk to you, answer any questions you might have, help you in any way that I can. Um, so please uh, feel free to, to email me or contact me in some way. Um, and until then, um, until next time, thank you for uh, watching and have a great day.